And that starts day three. Maybe now we'll get that stick decrypted. Drugs, guns, and cash. Or the fast and the curious. Hoping to find more information about why sleazy P.I. Carlos Maldonado has been keeping an eye on my place leads me to a swanky beach house where I'm delighted and surprised to meet an incredibly beautiful woman inside a home medical office. Unfortunately for me, the feeling is not mutual, and she's accompanied by a very lethal friend. Freeze. What are you doing here? Well, we had such a charming conversation on the vid phone, I knew I had to meet you. Now I'm rethinking that. You don't remember me, do you? Well, I wish I did. Does that count? We met just once, years ago. So did you really come here looking for me? Or are you here for Mason? I'm sorry, the correct answer is C, all of the above. I came here to find you, but it's Mason I'm looking for. Well, you'll have to make do with me. Mason isn't here. So how do you know Mason? In the biblical sense, I'm his wife, Ariel. Ariel Bowers. <sighs> when was the last time you saw him? Over a month ago. <laughs> no kidding. Wife like you, I'm surprised he ever leaves the house. We've been legally separated for over a month. He has issues, erratic behavior, periods of deep depression. It got to be too much. Psychological problems, huh? What are we talking here? He ties his shoe for an hour or he walks into Burger Barn with dynamite in his pants? I think it was just a reaction to stress. His work kept him away for weeks at a time. So I heard your husband was a neurologist, like a brain surgeon or something. Or something, yes. He worked in neurochemistry, how chemicals influence neural operations. So who's he working for now? Mason never talked about his work, even before we separated. But we stayed in touch. This was the longest he ever went without calling me. I got worried and came here. I found Maldonado's number and called to see if he knew anything. Yeah, well, Maldonado's not going to be able to help us much because he's dead. Is that who you were coming to see on Chandler Avenue? Yes, that's right. What happened to him? Well, I'm not sure, but I'm trying to find out. But the trail seems to lead through your husband, who, by the way, I believe has been abducted. Abducted? Now I'm worried sick. What are we going to do? Well, to start with, if you could think of anything that could help me out here to find him, that would be a big help. I will. Feel free to look around here. I wish I could stay and help, but uh, I'll give you my number so you can call me later. And sorry about the gun to the head thing. Oh, it's okay. I've just got one of those faces. Probably look better with a hole in it. Charming as ever. I have my doubts about Ariel Bauer's motivation. She certainly seems to have an agenda which includes more than just her husband's well-being. What's she up to? Hubba, hubba, whoo! Is it hot in here or did my internal fan just crash? Well, it feels like I'm being played for a sap. Oh, come on, she's just getting ready to play the field. I'd like to bring her over for a debugging session. <laughs> okay, enough. God damn it. Mike Nelson. Eh. <laughs> oh, let's see, where can we actually start looking? You don't have to put on the red light. God damn it. Just looking at this gives me an icky feeling. Just looking at this gives me an icky feeling. That was our digital assistant. We have a thing called a smart Alex, which is, yeah. Basically, there's a voice for this little interactable menu we have. It pops up every now and then. Yeah, that's not important. Yes, our digital assistant needs a reboot in manners. Looking at medical posters always gives me the heebie-jeebies. I got a feeling that's not a crochet needle. We can't take it? 
yeah, at least Tex did call him out a little bit. We're also kind of on the side hunt for any information about what happened to Chelsea. As far as anyone knows, they found Tex's burned out speeder with Chelsea's DNA inside it, so they pronounced her dead about six years ago, one year after Tex lost his memories. I'm sure these MRI pictures are showing me something. I'm sure these MRI pictures are showing me something. Unfortunately, it's not the tunnel of love. Yeah, that is his girlfriend. Looking at medical posters always gives me the heebie-jeebies. This cabinet needs a three-digit code to open. Which I do not have. I'm sure these MRI pictures are showing me something. Well, it's a microscope, and you'd need one of these just to see Rook's sense of humor. Can't activate that. Looking at medical posters always gives me the heebie-jeebies. Looks like Carlos Maldonado was trying to get a hold of Mason about someone named Margaret Leonard. Hmm. Just the place to conduct some business. Now you'd need a PhD to understand any of these books. Well, I wonder what's on this little device. Memory stick, huh? Are we going to be able to actually... If I found a flash drive, I could connect it to the video screen. Fair enough. We will do that in a second. He's looking a little under the weather. Tiny bit, yeah. Can't see anything there, anything there. Can't even shut off the machinery. This looks like a good bathroom read. My business card? How did Mason Bowers get this? Man, that is so cool. Nothing I can use. You sure about that? It seems like there's some things here we should be able to... Nothing I can use. Oh. Let's see. Surely, after all we've been through, Maldonado was tracking down a woman named Margaret Leonard for Bowers. Looks like Margaret Leonard is going rogue, which I do. This memory stick probably works on the computer in Bowers' MRI room. Probably. Long-lasting memories are created through a process of consolidation, which is based on the formations of protein in the brain. Thus, memories, particularly painful ones, are formed by these unstable proteins, making them easily identifiable and removed with a combination of drugs and behavior therapy, ensuring memory elimination. Of course, there are those who do not believe that the benefits of memory modification outweigh the risks. They warn that eliminating memories one could significantly alter a person's personality, their history. Hmm. So, a fancy device that wipes your memories, hmm? Useful technology. I see applications for anyone who ever went out with you or read the Twilight series. Come on. Little mercy here for the victim, all right? Why would Bowers want to erase my memory? Why would we want to erase our memory? Uh, you'd need a PhD to understand any of these books. Uh, you'd need a PhD to understand any of these books.
Yoink. Yoink. Fair enough. Classic. These baseball cards are great collectibles. Well, let's... I need nine of them, but I've got six. That's not right. So I can't put them up until I find the other three. No, that's not important. Hmm. I have a feeling I'm going to need to get that three-digit code. Maldonado was tracking down a woman named Margaret Lam Some crates should never be open. Okay, what have I missed? Isn't that Deforest Bunny from Night of the Lepus? Say hello to my little friends. Nothing I can use. Hmm. I really should look into getting a kitchen for my apartment. A safe spot I could do things on here. That didn't count. Yeah, maybe I just have to use them together. I don't know. What crime against humanity have you created? Something very tiny is written at the bottom of this petri dish. I'll need some help reading the inscription. Fair enough. I guess I didn't need a uh, didn't need a hood or anything like that. I guess I just used a sulfuric acid on it. Fair enough. Six seven zero. Is there more to this? That's interesting. Nothing I can use. Something tells me the doctor got a lot of toothaches. Anatomy books. Used only for medical research purposes, I'm sure. Something tells me the doctor got a lot of 
toothaches. Classic. These baseball cards are great collectibles. We have seven of them now. That means there are two left. Oh, what a very hospitable guest room. Looking at medical posters always gives me the heebie-jeebies. This table? A little small for my taste. Where else would we be hiding? Uh, you'd need a PhD to understand any of these books. Just the place to... Nice style work. You'd need a PhD to understand any of these books. I don't think there's anything else in here. Vertical stripes make these chairs look taller than they actually are. Vertical stripes make these chairs look taller than they actually are. Gross. This bowl is full of fruit. Sheesh. I couldn't even imagine lugging this thing up those stairs. Perfect place to keep a midnight snack. Now I could use that. Oh, there's one I missed. Last one's gonna be in somewhere blindingly obvious, isn't it? have I not thoroughly explored?
Aha. Now I could use that. I knew there was something blindingly obvious I was not Classic. finding. These baseball cards are great collectibles. Well, that was stupid. Oh. Can I get a better look at them? Okay, it's 17. I'm willing to bet that all three triangle all three lines of the triangle have to be 17. 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 Eight and eight. Which means those two have to go over here. So that can't be right if 17 is my goal. I'm having a real hard time seeing the numbers on these. Makes it really difficult, game. Hopefully this doesn't cause too many problems with the, with the, uh, okay, now I can kind of see what I'm doing. Oh, 
What do I have? 8, 13, 16. Thirteen, fifteen, sixteen. Thirteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Merry Christmas. The drawer inside this safe needs two additional cards. Whatever's in here must be so important that Mason Bowers keeps both the cards with him at all times. Oh, goody. Oh, no. Okay. Sorry, just had to reset the uh reset this so I wasn't in full screen mode and could actually see the uh, numbers on there. Hmm, lots of cash. Usually a sign of illegal activity. Pawn Weekly maybe even sadder than that Cat Weekly magazine. Hmm, lots of cash. Usually a sign of illegal activity. Hmm, lots of cash. Usually a sign of illegal activity. Hmm. Well, if he reads Pawn Weekly magazine... Looks like Bowers was interested in some Nikola Tesla artifacts from Rook's Pawn Shop. That gives us a lead. Unfortunately, unfortunately, that lead only gets us to look. We don't have his stuff, huh? Wasn't there a Tesla case? Not in here. In the previous game, I don't think so. I don't think we had anything to do with Tesla in the previous game. Yes, the only thing to do now, since we've gotten a hint he keeps those on him at all times, and we don't have any clue as to his location right now. Let's go talk to Rook. I better drop by the barbecue joint and see how that dweeb Mojo's doing. Maybe he's decrypted that memory stick. Yeah, about time, too. I need a new lead on this case. Also, Rook. Actually. Hmm. No messages on the vid phone. Okay, fair enough. 
Yeah, they crack a lot of jokes about the fact that Mike Nelson is the voice of our PDA. Sometimes, I wish I had a talking gumball machine as my wacky sidekick. Like that. We need to talk. Uh, do we have to, really? Yeah, trust me. You may be involved in what happened to me. Oh, the very thought makes me giddy. I knew you'd be pleased to hear that. But it's all tied to items of Nikola Tesla and a man named Mason Bowers. Well, it's true. It's true. I've had some very rare Tesla items in my possession from time to time. But I have uh, never heard of his uh, Mason Bowers. You know Carlos Maldonado? Well, of course I know that wretched swine. Tell me how he ties into Tesla. Maldonado tried to bribe and threaten me to reveal my source of my Tesla items, but I didn't give it to him, and I won't give it to you. Do you think Maldonado was the one watching you? I think so. Oh, my, my, my. That could be troublesome. I need to make some inquiries. Uh, is there anything else? Apparently not. So yeah, Tech's office has been upgraded in the last seven years, but he doesn't remember getting any of the upgrades. And then something happened to put a lot of holes in the walls. Yeah. Guess we should run by Inspector Burns Barbecue here, where if your mouth is charred, you won't know the difference in flavor anyway. So, your memory stick's all ready to go. Now, what do you give me for it? At two? What are you talking about? I thought we were partners in anti-crime. You think I'm going to solve your case for free just because you're my idol? No, the great Tex Murphy wouldn't lift a finger without compensation. Neither will I. So, how much are we talking here? Do you have an action figure? I want something money can't buy. Hmm. You know, you can buy action figures. I'm surprised you didn't know that. No, I want an action figure of you. How do I know what's on the memory sticks even worth anything? You know how your cases always have a hundred loose ends and you need that one missing piece to tie it all together? <laughs> it's not always like that. This could be that one missing piece. Mr. Murphy, you need this. Yeah, well, I'm all out of action figures, so now what? Do you remember that sicko who was going around with a liquid nitrogen freeze gun, shooting people and then smashing them? The press called him the Nitro Stalker. You got involved and the cops finally found him a few weeks later, smashed into a million pieces. You think I did that? Everybody knows you were behind that bit of freeze-dried justice. The freeze gun was never found, and I'm betting you took it. I'll trade you the memory stick straight up for it. All right. But please be aware that Inspector Burns Corporate will be hearing about your shoddy customer service. Don't know. Hmm. I wonder who'd know about that stupid freeze gun around here. That is an excellent question. Maybe Louie. Whatever you need, my... Just ask. You got me there, my... Yeah. Sadly. Maybe we sold it to Zach. Not again. You're gonna get me fired. Or worse. Can't help you with that. Hmm. Maybe we pawned it. Well, if it isn't Mr. Van Winkle. What is it I can help you with, Rip? 
But the tree's gone. The one you pawned that supposedly belonged to the Nitro Stalker. I believe it was purchased by one of those vigilante Morlock hunters. Mm-hmm. The dude that made us pay the debt. And just in case you're wondering, Nico is not around anymore. Oh, the bell's gone. If a bell is on the front desk, I could ring it and talk to the clerk. Uh, Clint bought this place, by the way. Nico retired, basically, when Clint bought the building from him. Oh, let's see. The Knights Templar's place is open. Also, because you missed earlier, yes, there's a three cards to midnight shop here. That's run by uh, Archie Ellis. Yeah, and Spectre Burns now has his own company. Where was the sewer entrance? That seems like a thing the Morlocks would use. Yeah, Three Cards to Midnight was made by the same people behind the Tex Murphy games. That's why I did a Let's Play of it years and years ago. Yeah, there was, and I never could manage to buy it. And the thing is, their sequel, I tried to purchase it, but I could never get the, uh, I could never get it to go through. The purchase to go through? And I could never get them to answer their help. Well, that's the sewer to Chandler Avenue. And I never go in there unless I really, really have to. Mm, it seems like something we'd want to do. I hope you don't mind, Mife. I've been telling folks in the neighborhood about your situation, just so they know it's the old tax they're dealing with. Let me know what else I can do for you. Yeah, the Morlocks? No, okay. So I assume that's not a lead we're supposed to, uh... The three cards to dead time, yeah. Like I said, I could not... I tried to buy it? Tried? But when I tried to pay for it, the payment just never went through. Beseech thee, give us strength, courage, protection. Hail, fellow countrymen. We are ready to begin our quest. Hunting the dreadful night beast. Make haste. Sorry, Tex, we gotta run. Farewell, Sir Larry Curly and Mo. I'll be sure to tell Snow White you're gonna be late for breakfast. Ooh, now this place is cool. A nerdy seventh grader's paradise. Yeah, every weapon you'd ever need to be a level 85 World of Warlord chieftain. Uh -huh. Well, I don't teach go-go dance at my academy. Uh, we're more respectable than that. Boy, Broken Sword fell on some hard times, didn't it? Did someone leave these on? Because they look like they're on. And think Ow! Yep. Still learning that lesson the hard way. Did someone leave these on? Because they look like they're on. Ow! Yep. Yep. Still learning that the hard way. Apparently they still play Twisty. I used to love the game of Twisty until I realized its true sinister purpose. 
Whoa, better tell Yogi to be on the lookout for these in Jellystone. It's a key to a padlock. Yoink. An axe. Why are we taking the axe? That seems useful. The half-life of Weenie World Burgers is at least 20 years. Back in the Hayes Code days, couples had to sleep in two separate sleeping bags. Yikes. No novelty toys in here. Only real weaponry. Fool me once, Rubber Spaghetti. Shame on you. Fool me twice. Shame on me. Whoa. I feel like I just missed the Fellowship before they headed off to Mordor. Well, yeah. Mace is still a common tool for women's self-defense. Well, I mean, he's probably not wrong in this day and age. Yep, that's not diet. Padlocking the fridge is for extreme dieters only. Ah, poor Rusty. I knew him well. Horatio. Gross. No one's ever removed this thing since the incident? Apparently not. Oh, we have a key. It's a padlock key. Man, I don't even know what I was trying to do. Use a padlock key in a padlock? I guess it's not that padlock key then? Oh, it says roof on it. It's a padlock. No wonder. Yeah, that was where uh, we found Rusty. Roof access. Wait a second. I remember years ago, Rusty once bragged that he had a secret panel installed in the water tower on the roof to hide his smuggled illegal novelty items. I wonder if the Morlock hunters stashed their valuables there as well. This needs a key. Well. There we go. Oh, we're up here now. I see they put Rusty's zip line back in place. How convenient. A zip line, eh? Huh. Nice doggy. Good doggy. That looks like a moron trap. Yeah, not a very well animated doggy. Yes, we are. We are a moron. Moron trap. Well, you're dead. Good thing you saved your game. Wait, you did save your game, right? Because there's no way I'm going through all that again. Oh, just kind of auto saved us back here. Hey, I need a zipline trolley to place on that rope. Hmm. Well, we got a zipline trolley, but, um,. Since it auto saved, let's, let's actually try this out. Oh, it just knocked itself out. Fair enough. Oh, no way, a freeze gun? 
This is definitely your coolest case ever. No pun intended. With freeze guns, the puns are always intended. Are you familiar with the work of Arnold Schwarzenegger? Please, have mercy. I'm afraid my condition has left me cold to your pleas of mercy. I'm gonna find a way to turn you off, I swear. You're not sending me to the cooler. Thank you, Deux Machina. <laughs> Off. Just in case the dog wakes up before we get out of here. It, it's Mike Nelson. Would you expect it to quote good movies? For the unaware, Mike Nelson is, you know, Mystery Science Theater 3000 guy. Or one of them. So we got that. A freeze gun? Could it get any more geeky? Well, yes. Yes, it's Mike Nelson. He's gonna quote Batman and Robin. And probably several other movies I just haven't caught the references to by now. You got it, didn't you? The Nitro Stalker Freeze Gun. So cool. My internet group is going to be so jealous. Listen, kid. We kind of keep this on the down low. If the cops find out I gave this to you, I'm probably going to lose my license. Uh, you can count on me. And I've already forgotten what was on that memory stick. Lips are zipped. Good enough. And, by the way, that doesn't work. He just looks so heartbroken over it. My god. And it started raining. We may only get one chance, Carlos, so I wanted to go over the plan one more time. If Margaret shows up at the Ritz, call me immediately. If I'm delayed, detain her. We have to assume she won't give up the egg voluntarily, but I want to talk to her first. You know why I've given you the cryo chamber. But that has to be the very last resort. And if anything happens to me, I'll need you to contact a friend of mine. Keep it safe until I retrieve it. Well, it sounds like Mason and Margaret had a major disagreement. I need to locate both of them and get to the bottom of this. I decide to head back to my office to sort things out. That little piece of glass he held up, that is the PDA. With the attitude. Hey, cowboy. Any memories coming back yet? Not so far, but something tells me I might be missing out on some really good ones. That's solid detective work. So... Were we dating? Dating? Oh... That's so cute. I guess you can call it that. But we were also working together in a more professional capacity. Well, now my detective skills are picking up a little sarcasm. Seriously, cowboy. You're good. I've learned a lot working with you the past couple weeks. Hmm? Let me get this straight. Uh, you and I were working on a case together. Do you mind telling me about that? Not at all. You wanted a list of tenants here at the Ritz as far back as I could go. Why would I do that? It was your dreams. They were vivid before, but they were getting out of control. It's almost like they were changing you into someone else. You talked about seeing things from the past, but you wouldn't give me details. You're incredibly stressed. It was like you actually believed this apartment was haunted. You even started looking into psychometry. Psycho what? Psychometry. It's the belief that an object 
can contain a person's energy or memories. So, not only am I an amnesiac, but I'm a paranormal idiot. Great. Sounds crazy, I know. But then we found out about Donnelly. Who? J.T. Donnelly. It was the most bizarre thing. I'd heard you mention the name in your sleep. But then his name turned up when I checked out previous tenants. So who is this guy? He's a private investigator, a real old school brute. He worked for some powerful, influential people, but then he disappeared around 1943. His last known address was here. San Francisco. No, here, at the Ritz in this exact apartment. Okay, that's a little bizarre. It gets bizarrier. You call me one night, raving like a lunatic, saying the walls were talking. I rushed over and found holes smashed in the wall, and you curled up on the floor in a ball. Well, I'm glad to hear I haven't changed that much. You wouldn't tell me what had happened. But after that, you wouldn't sleep here. That's when you got your new place and started to sleep there. Hold on. I have another place? Yes, you do. And it's even nicer than here. This is all crazy. I think I'm going to sleep here tonight just to see whether it affects me in the same way. Listen, Taylor, um, I'm beginning to see what the other me saw in you. But in my head, it's still 2043. I've got to tell you, there was somebody else. Chelsea, I know. You know how much she meant to me, Tex. Losing her was traumatic as hell for you. But she's gone. And there's nothing you can say or do or don't do that's going to bring her back. I sure do. I'm alive. And that's my heart. It's yours if you want it. And it comes with all the other bits. Mm-hmm. Just because it's Tex of 2043... I don't know you, lady. I'm sorry, Taylor, but I love Chelsea. And I never even got the chance to tell her. And if there's any chance that I can find her, I've got to do it. I hope you'd understand. I don't understand, Tex. Why can't you let this go? It's crazy. That room you have across the hall with all her stuff is like some sick Chelsea shrine. I'm sorry I shouldn't have said that. Six hours later, the rain was finally letting up. Last night felt like a blindside punch we to the face. We got a Chelsea key out of the door. I didn't think having inventory. Taylor walking out of my office could be so painful. There's just something reassuring and comfortable about her. But I've got way too many questions, yearnings, and guilt not to find out what happened to Chelsea. Even if it kills me, I've got to know. There's something darker than the night I'm dealing with, and it hinges on what happened that evening seven years ago with her. As Taylor leaves, she hands me the key to a room at the Ritz. She calls the Chelsea Shrine Room. Yes, that is someone he knew was not in the games, not in the previous games. Someone he met in the seven-year interim between the last game and this one. And that is Taylor. She is an investigative journalist for one of the major papers in the area, and she is also Louis's niece. Louie is not crazy about the fact that she and Tex were hooking up at any, for any point whatsoever. But I think, on this note, it marks a good stopping spot for the stream. And I've got to figure out a way to chop this up. Okay, we just arrived back at the apartment. Okay.
computer is evil, huh? Too much concentration of Ishimaru. I'm telling you. So anyway. Oh yeah, that's right. We had the offer from Taylor to spend the night with us and we turned her down because we're we're not sure. We're not uh, sure if Chelsea is still alive or dead. You realize too much issue could tell you to turn off your computer and go get some exercise, right? I'm just saying. So, uh, how is everybody tonight? Mellow and relaxed. Nice PJ. That's good. Considering I know for a good number of people that could be watching, it is already past midnight and thus is 2018, but it is not here yet. Those of us in the continental United States don't get to experience that for a few hours. Playing BDO, huh? Tea might help, yeah. Sleep might help, too. Looks like Archie's back in town. I should check out his three cards to midnight shop and see if he knows anything. No. Right click. According to Taylor, this opens a room here at the Ritz that has some of Chelsea's belongings. Is that loud enough for everybody or do I need to turn it up again? Looks like Bowers was interested in some Nikola Tesla artifacts from Rook's pawn shop. And looks like Archie's back in town. I should check out his three cards to midnight shop and see if he knows anything. The voice is the most important thing here. I'll turn that up quite a bit because I could barely hear it. Looks like Archie's back in town. I should check out his three cards to midnight shop and see if he knows anything. According to Taylor, this opens a room here at the Ritz that has some of Chelsea's belongings. Is that any better? I'm preemptively saying no because that didn't make a whole lot of whole lot of a uh, difference for me. Looks like Archie's back in town. I should check out his three cards to midnight shop and see if he knows anything. How's that for everybody? Hello, Dragonus. Better? Okay. So I didn't have a whole lot of room left to crank it up, so... I be a bugger now. Why am I a bugger? I mean, never go to London with that designation. Looks like somebody's wiped my computer clean. That's still really freaking quiet. Ah, okay. Did that just revert it? Yes, it did. Looks like somebody's wiped my computer clean. That isn't helping. 
This looks interesting. Probably a book on how to map out fun spots to visit inside your brain. So let me know if that's still not loud enough. That we'll see what I can do. And let's see. What's up with the bed? Looks like it's for a Lothario instead of some hardworking down on his luck PI. Am I going crazy here? Maybe we already did the spending the night thing in a cutscene or something like that. Well, I had this door permanently sealed as it opened directly into my bedroom. People thought that was awfully presumptuous of me. Oh well, at any rate. One solid thing we can do is actually go visit the Three Cards to Midnight shop, which has been closed up until now. It looks like the Ark of the Covenant, yes. Just because that is actually worth looking at. I will show you Ark of Covenant at end of bed. Ark of the Covenant footrest. Picked it up at a government warehouse sale years back. But I've never had the nerve to open it all the way. Ark of the Covenant footrest. Picked it up at a government warehouse sale years back. But I've never had the nerve to open it all the way. I'm beginning to think these vocal tracks. I don't know. Why does Tex have anything right now? He has a seven year gap in his memory. Archie Ellis is my herbal tea loving, source for all things alien supernatural conspiracy theorist. Or he's just plain crazy. He ran into some trouble with the NSA on my last case. Last I knew, he was hiding out in some tropical locale with a bevy of beauties. I'm surprised he's back in town. Yes, Archie Ellis really helped us out. <clears throat> hey, Murphy, how you doing? You, you okay? I, I heard you were having some kind of amnesia. You know, most alien abductees always have some sort of memory loss. <laughs> so, let's see. Yeah, Archie was the nerd in the uh, Pandora Directive. He was a conspiracy nut nerd. Uh, let's see. Yeah, well, I didn't. Last I saw you, you were on some tropical island hiding out from the NSA. Okay, like I told you before, I wasn't hiding. I was relaxed. Oh, and of course, you don't even remember talking to me, do you? <laughs> uh, let me see where you got hit. <gasps> Yowza! You really back off, man, because I swear I will shoot the next person who tries to touch this, okay? <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Ouch. So, I guess you do need some catching up then. A few months ago, I moved back here from the islands and I opened up this place. And I was hoping that you and I could hang out together like old times, but you haven't been around much. Yeah, that wound on his head is only a couple of days old. So, you know. So, did I happen to tell you anything? Not yet, but you know I'm always ready to be Robin to your Batman. <laughs> oh, without the homoerotic undertones, of course. Sorry, Arch, but it's a package deal. You're gonna be in this with me. You're gonna have to be. <laughs> Just a drop in his face. <laughs> okay, Boy Wonder, I need you to enter two names into the back computer. Mason Bowers, Margaret Leonard. Well, I don't know about Mason Bowers, but Margaret Leonard, she's connected to one of the greatest mysteries of all time. I mean, you know who uh, Nikola Tesla was, right? Nikola. The cop doctor? Nikola Tesla was a genius. 
probably one of the greatest geniuses ever. I mean, it was Tesla, not Marconi, who was the true inventor of the radio. He invented a, a Tesla coil, the AC electricity, remote control. He even pioneered cryogenics. So are you almost to the part about Margaret Leonard? Right. Well, uh, Tesla died in 1943 when the FBI uh, swooped in and confiscated all his papers and designs. Then in about 2012, all this stuff, the, the Tesla cash just disappeared. <laughs> and you want to know who the number one suspect was? Margaret Leonard. No, an FBI agent named Charles Johansson. Now, I know they could never prove that he did it, but then he quits the FBI and joins some Tesla fanatic group called the Tesla Legacy Society, a group dedicated to making the world better through technology. And that's where he meets Margaret Leonard. Bingo! <laughs> they fall in love, they get married. I think they even had a kid together. So where's Margaret now? Huh, not a clue. Johansson uh, died a couple years later, cancer, I think. And after that, Margaret just dropped out of circulation. So all this happened, uh, what, 30, 37 years ago? I mean, no one's found the Tesla cash since then? It's one of the great mysteries, the lost inventions of Nikola Tesla. What's the big deal with the Tesla inventions? I mean, there must be some reason they were never made. Oh, you ever hear of a little thing called Tunguska? <sighs> Have I ever. Picked up a bad case when I was down in Mexico. That's where I learned the phrase, Baños, rapidos, andale muchachos, vamonos. Oh. God damn it, Tex. <laughs> too funny. You know, in 1890, Tesla conducted an experiment and created a resonance frequency. You know, like a big vibration, and it nearly took out a whole chunk of New York City. And then in the 1900s, he began to work on what he called the Teleforce Beam. The press called it, you know, a death ray, you know, cooler name. But a few years later in Russia, remote area called Tunguska, something caused an explosion a thousand times greater than the atomic bomb. A thousand times greater than the atomic bomb 40 years before we invented it? But that was the last anyone ever heard of the death ray. Tesla never got funding. Instead, they made him out to be some crackpot, and he was broke for the rest of his life. Some people think the plans for it were part of the Tesla cash. Just think how much someone would pay to get their hands on that. So, plenty of things. Let's ask about everything in line. Because that gets us points. And I'll never forget what you did tipping me off before that whack job NSA guy could get me. <laughs> Seems nice. Yeah, what about you? You know me, Murph. Always up for an adventure. As long as I don't have to go anywhere. What about the shop? You like my shop? <laughs> kind of like my old one, the Cosmic Connection. But I had to change the name in case, you know, the, the NSA and all that. Well, Louis? Yeah, that's kind of what they're referring to. Some conspiracy theories do not believe that was a meteorite impact. I eat at the brew and stew all the time. Memory loss. I actually wouldn't mind forgetting a few years of my own life, mostly my teenage years. I wouldn't, because I don't want to relive all those mistakes. Yeah. Oh, that's the hollow babe at the Golden Gate. Yeah, Mojo is warm for her form, or lack thereof, as it were. He's not very friendly, is he? No, Rook isn't. The barbecue? My little buddy Mojo works over there. <laughs> we hang out a lot, but I can't stay there too long. Something makes my eyeballs burn. Can't imagine what. Here, take a look at the photo. Gosh, you'd think a sidekick would be a little more helpful, huh? What about a freeze gun? Don't know about that. That we already handed back to Mojo. JT? Donnelly's kind of a mysterious character. 
He was a private detective Tesla may have hired not long before he died. There's a mention of it in one of Tesla's letters. In case you in case you do not remember, JT Donnelly literally had rented out the apartment that Tex is living in a while back. And Jojo is kind of a computer expert. Or Jojo, Mojo. He is a computer expert that works as a cashier over at a uh, barbecue place. Our dreams? So both aliens and ghosts can communicate through their dreams. It's a proven fact. You want that now? Margaret Leonard? I've been checking my sources, but no one's heard a thing about her in years. Johansson? He died like well, 40 years ago and either left the Tesla cash with Margaret Leonard or somebody else, or he took it to the grave. If you believe in all the conspiracy theories that he's spitting out, it does. And Tesla cash. The Tesla cash is right up there for me. Uh oh, and the death ray? Well, the name says it all, doesn't it? Mm hmm. As I leave, Archie hands me an old photograph of Margaret Leonard. Maybe someone else on Chandler will recognize her from the picture. Maybe. Oh, we got plenty of choices. I don't think any of them are over here. The warehouse, the Bama Club, that's useless right now unless we want to hit ourselves in the head more. Which I don't think actually does any actual any actual damage, but you know. Hey, Tex. How's your case progressing? Not a clue. Okay. Even though we know what happened to it, I'm still gonna ask because it gets us points. Sorry, I don't know a lot of people. Except the ones that come in here. Hmm. So, Margaret Leonard did not stay in here. Still nobody at the Fuchsia Flamingo. Closed. Yeah, this building's been a lemon for anyone who's tried to open a business here. Maybe the Knights Templar. Wow, that's loud. Saying the effects are down way down. Maybe they have some of these effects settings on the voice and they shouldn't. Nobody here, though. I think their sound mixing has was not the best for this game. Maybe Rook knows something. Or it's closed. Yeah, it's closed. Can't even go in as if we wanted to. Still can't believe I'm working with the one and only Tex Murphy. What can I do for you, sir? That's Mojo. That's the witch. At least that's what I call her. A couple times I've seen this old lady sneaking around the neighborhood. Hmm. Not very helpful. Other than the fact we know she comes to this neighborhood. What about you, Zach? More questions? Why you gotta keep coming back with more questions? Because I need answers. I remember her. Sweet little old lady. Used to see her around the neighborhood years ago. Don't remember the last time I saw her. Hmm. She was always in the neighborhood. Maybe Louie knows something? I think everybody's pretty happy that you're back to your old self. Well, not Except Louie. Rook. Or Rook, I mean. That ornery old cuss. No pleasing him, I guess. Potentially a sweet old lady. I know you was having bad dreams way back when. But I didn't hear nothing else about him after, you know, the thing with Chelsea. Oh, I know this little lady. 
haven't seen her around in quite a while, but she used to come in pretty regular. And I think she lived at the Ritz, at least for a time. She and Chelsea were real friendly. That's not good. I'm pretty sure her name wasn't Margaret Leonard, though. At least that ain't the name she told me. Nah. So... If, uh, Clint is available, maybe we can ask him. Yeah, the new self was a jackass. He basically Rook liked him. If that tells you how bad of a character he was. If you were looking for me earlier, I wasn't here. I noticed. Yeah, I'm a PI, so I figured that one out already. Now that you're back, I wonder if you could help me out with something. You recognize the woman in this photo? Oh, nice. I think I saw her in a playbook from 1996. Is this your girlfriend? I should punch you. Well now, if she were my girlfriend, I wouldn't be trying to figure out who she was now, would I? Sheesh. <laughs> I'm just kidding about this woman being your girlfriend. She's actually mine. Uh -huh. No, I'm kidding again. This is Margaret Lennon. She's had a room here at the Ritz forever. She used to live here, but I haven't seen her in years. So, she may not be here anymore, but she auto-pays her rent. So, it's all good. Any chance you can get me into her apartment? <laughs> not a chance in hell. I let her install her own security system, just like you, except hers is a real one. I can't mm. tell you which apartment it is, but you won't get in without a passcode or a personal invitation. Maybe I can try to help you with something else. Can't help you with that. I'll take the free points, though. I'll bet she was something back in the day. Way back in the day. Yeah, you don't want to... No, let's not send him back down that road. Yeah, it's, it's supposed to be an obvious prosthetic. He is literally missing an eye. And he kind of had just a very makeshift eye patch until this game. Because he was literally living in a dumpster but since he's bought this place took it over and can afford something a little better than an average eye patch you know all i know about her is she's got a room here i hardly ever see her so i don't know when she's here and when she isn't if a bell is on the front desk i could ring it and talk to the clerk I wonder if anyone else on Chandler Avenue has seen Margaret Leonard. It's a Chelsea key at 2E I could go into. Maldonado was tracking down a woman named Margaret Leonard for Bowers. Yeah. Okay. You know, it used to really piss me off the way you'd always come around asking your questions, but now that you're paying me for it, I really don't mind. Now, did you actually tell me what her... You did not. All I know about her is she's got a room here. I hardly ever see her. So, I don't know when she's here and when she isn't. Maybe you just automatically told me. He's our landlord, so we are paying him to live here. Basically. The problem with vidphones is you can't call anyone from the bathroom anymore. Well, you shouldn't. I think that's it. Let's see if any of these, besides 2E, trigger for us. People who stay here at the Ritz don't want to be found. People who stay here at the Ritz don't want to be found. Yeah, needs a key. Okay, nothing there. He didn't actually tell us which one she was. Yeah, there is a handprint. Uh-oh. That doesn't look good. 
Yeah, needs a key. But unfortunately, we do not have a key to 2C. Uh oh. That doesn't look good. Wonder if the bloody handprint would Can we talk to you. Well, this is a flashy new neighbor. Nope. Hey, uh, there's a bloody handprint up there. Always happy to help out my best tenant. Our key is two E. Let's actually go look at 2E, since we can get in there. Yeah, needs a key. Yeah, so my guess is 2C is Margaret. Oh yeah, this, this is kind of a shrine. Yeah, I remember how much Chelsea wanted to go to the Fuchsia Flamingo that night. A reminder of the best and worst night of my life. Chelsea loved to go to Arizona. I'd like to think I was the only thing keeping her here on Chandler Avenue. You probably were. I'm here to ask you out for dinner, and I'm not taking no for an answer. What? Like a date? No, it'd be more like two friends having a great meal and maybe some stimulating conversation. I guess that'd be okay. I mean, yeah, that'd... They'd be all right. So what are you in the mood for? You know, I heard Weenie World put tater tots on the menu. I've got a better idea. Why don't you let me make you dinner at my place? It's cheaper than going out. <coughs> and uh, besides, I have uh, something I'd like to talk to you about. Let's say, uh, 8 o'clock? Well, you talked me into it, Miss Bethel. Well, I feel so spoiled. By the way, what should I bring, red or white? Both. I remember this thing was fourteen dollars and ninety nine cents. Man, I spent an entire three months salary on a ring for Chelsea. Both, yes. Of all the skills Chelsea had, one in particular comes to mind. Chelsea always looked great in hats. It's a picture of me and my would-be girlfriend, Chelsea Bando. I've got a gut feeling she's out there. Yeah, she was a cowgirl at heart. That's why she went to Arizona. It's funny how fashion cycles circle around. These are all Chelsea's belongings. When the police closed her case, I must have picked up these items from her apartment. Yes, and whip cracking. I showed that off, didn't I? I believe I got that ending. I know Chelsea and I will always have Weenie World tater tots. Screaming in the rain. Fair enough. Oh, that's got to be a fire hazard. Oh, that's got to be a fire hazard. Apparently they're real candles, but they're just able to burn forever. I guess. Ever burn candles it is. Well, let's see. Absolutely nobody actually gave us much clue about Margaret Leonard. Hmm. Hmm. Clint didn't point us in any other directions. Yeah, maybe, maybe Rook. Maybe Rook has opened. I mean, his shop was closed earlier. It is open! So yeah, I guess that is where we're supposed to go next. Okay. 
I've been thinking, Murphy. Uh, perhaps I should confide something to you. Oh, this okay. should be good. That is, if you believe the Maldonado is spying on you, but it could have been someone else. Uh, not Margaret Leonard, by any chance. How did you know? Do the words P.I. mean anything to you? Margaret may be in grave danger. I, I've tried to contact her, but to no avail. Gosh, if only we knew someone with some detective skills. You know how to get into her apartment? No, but she may have left a clue. Some time ago, she left this in my care. It's, it's for you. The genius of Nikola Tesla. For me? She wanted you to have it in case anything happened. Margaret was apparently a big buyer of any Tesla artifacts he ever came across. So, his worry for her might have been very largely monetary. And what about crawling out a window? Doesn't give us that option. I don't exactly have a window to crawl out of. The windows I could access were all just kind of not openable. Yeah, this game is called The Tesla Effect. Anyway. I met Margaret years ago. She was a woman of secrets. I met Margaret years ago. So same thing she either way, okay. Secrets. Yeah, it sounds like she was, except by uh, Mojo. I have an interest in Tesla collectibles, so yes, I've heard of it. And no, I don't know where you could find it. Hmm. So, we has book. Okay. That's an old magic square grid code. Row and column totals are oh. the key. Oh goody, a magic square. A magic square that apparently doesn't follow the rules of any other magic square I've ever seen. Hmm. Well, in the event, let's see. This is a magic square. Everything has to equal the same number. Both up or both horizontally and vertically, so 10 plus 15. So let's see. So that is 6. 9, 12, 14, 1, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, and it's just 5. So 5, 8, 1, 6. Or at least that's the order from top to bottom. Asking your question. Yeah, nope, no help. All I know huh? about her is she's got a room here. I hardly ever see her, so I don't know when she's here. I mean, I can guess which one we're supposed to get. Needs a key. Needs a key. Okay, what am I missing? That accomplished nothing. Hmm. Yeah, needs a key. So what? In, so what step did I not take? Yeah, the code would have to be for something else. Hmm. I 
miss something? Oh! Okay, I, I see, I, I get it. Okay. I are not smart. Why would Margaret Leonard leave me a key? Don't know. I have a bad feeling about going in here. That looks uh -oh. that like a look bloody good. saw. That chair looks comfortable. Too comfortable. Another room I can go in. Was she blind when she picked these out? That is a little funky looking. Oh, there's a flower for each month of the year. But you want to bet that's a puzzle or a clue to a puzzle at some point. Like right here. Mm -mm. Okay. I'm not sure what that flower is. My lack of knowledge of flowers is not going to help me here. Okay, let's see. That one's September. That is June. I think that one's April's. The other one kind of has to be January. So I think I moved the only one that doesn't need to go. So let's see. I'm not sure if the top one is... Okay. Okay, that one should be January. February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September. February, March, April, March, April, May, June. There we go. It was a dial that had 12 slots on it, so, you know, and I had 12 choices for each one. It's a picture of someone named Mantis. Mantis? And nothing else in there. Fair enough. It's a picture of someone named Mantis. Dude with some massive blister problems. Mutant of some type, I would imagine. <coughs> Looks like Margaret Leonard had a video journal. I'll need to find a memory stick to use on the vid player to watch them. It's a business card for someone named Count St. Germain. Hmm. Can't look at much else in here. Apparently that party on the first floor is bumping. Ooh, 
Didn't it have a memory stick? I used to. It's a business card for someone named Count St. Germain. Hmm. As I walk in the bathroom, I realize there's something wrong here. I was gonna say, that's a lot of blood, but those just look like floral prints. Can't investigate the toilet. I can investigate that, but I'm saving it. There's our car. Dead person? What are the odds this is a dead person? Or someone gonna kill us. Dead person. That's a hell of a screen, Tex.